The Girl Scout murderers have haunted Oklahomans for 45 years now, but investigators say newly DNA testing, newly done DNA testing by OSBI points to one killer. It was 1977. Three young campers, Lori Farmer, Michelle Gousset, and Denise Milner were raped and murdered in Mays County. And even though a suspect was arrested and tried, he was also acquitted. And that has led to questions and wild conspiracy theories ever since. But the family search for justice has never ended. News on Six's Reagan Ledbetter has an exclusive look at this case tonight. Reagan? Craig and Lori, nine years ago, Lori Farmer's parents sat down with Mays County Sheriff Mike Reed and asked him to take a new look at the case. They had no idea what he and OSBI agents would uncover. Reed's search for the truth took him down a road filled with anger, sadness, and sleepless nights, but also answers. And even though these answers may bring some measure of peace for the families, there will never be closure. The people in Locust Grove believe this is the worst thing that has ever happened to the town. What kind of a person would do something like that? We obviously know that it's a person who doesn't belong to what we accept as uh, the normal human race. The Girl Scout murders are a story without an ending. There ain't nothing about this whole thing is peaceful. It is evil. You have babies, eight, nine, ten-year-old babies, innocent that were beat to death and sexually assaulted. Well, it's a journey I wouldn't wish on anyone. It's different than a death. It's different than a loss because our daughter was murdered. A request turned into a nine-year mission to find out the truth about what happened to the Girl Scouts who were raped and murdered at Camp Scott and put an end to the hundreds of conspiracy theories. On June 12, 1977, eight-year-old Lori Farmer, nine-year-old Michelle Gousset, and 10-year-old Denise Milner set off for camp, but never came home. There was an arrest, a trial, and an acquittal. Sheriff Mike Reed grew up here in Mays County and was just a boy when the murders shocked the conscience of this small community. He never imagined years later he'd be the one asked to find answers. And I give him my word that I, I would I definitely didn't. I didn't know what I could do, but I would look at it. A year after Reed started looking over the case, he and OSBI agents went to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children in Virginia, where 23 of the best homicide investigators, FBI behavioral analysts, and profilers in the world make up a cold case board. And they all spent a month independently combing through every document and every piece of evidence. Each and every one of them had come to the same conclusion. The only person to commit these murders was Jean Leroy Hart. Those people who don't live in Oklahoma, don't have any thought about who it should be, arrived at the same conclusion that Mike already had. Few people have more at stake in this case than Sherry Farmer, since her daughter Lori was one of those murdered. She finally let herself believe they would get to the truth when agents suggested Reed have some evidence retested for DNA. That testing would cost $30,000, money the sheriff's office didn't have. But citizens in Mays County stepped up and raised every penny of it, and that evidence was tested in 2019. And the results have not been released until now. There is not a piece of DNA that we've not been able to identify. Reed says the DNA shows there's no other suspect it could be other than Hart and eliminates every other suspect ever brought up Hart was an escapee on the run when he was arrested for the murders in 1978 after a 10-month-long manhunt, but a jury found him not guilty in 1979. But DNA evidence was not available then. Plus, Reed's conclusions go far beyond DNA. If there was absolutely no DNA, just the information that I know now that was not allowed to be showed to the jury, there is absolutely no doubt whatsoever that Gene Hart is the person who committed these crimes. The jury never heard that in 1966, Hart kidnapped two pregnant women at gunpoint, drove them to the middle of nowhere in Mays County, tied them up, raped them repeatedly, covered them in brush, and left them for dead. Textbook, serial rapist. You're convicted of that, and you're paroled in two and a half years and back out on the road. 
Reed says he gets at least one phone call a month from someone saying they know who the killer is, and there are plenty of people going on social media spouting theories with no truth to them. I heard it forever when I was growing up. Oh, they just looked at one person. Really? You know, I can show you documentation of 139 people OSBI interviewed and looked as a possible suspect. Reed says one of the big myths people have bought into is there were two different knots used to tie up the girls, meaning two people were involved. But Reed says he's proven that to be false. One is a single overhand knot. Bingo. If, stick your finger up there, so if I attach that to that, now it is a single half hitch. The exact same pattern, single overhand knot, now it is a double half hitch. It's really not two different knots. It's the same exact pattern. After all his research and going through the evidence over and over, he says he can disprove every wild theory out there with actual facts. Except one thing, which is there may have been someone involved after the fact because of a bloody footprint found in one of the tents. But he believes it's logical to assume that was someone innocently walking into the scene. They could have asked, could have stepped in there um, and then realized, oh my gosh, I got blood on my shoes. Trooper Harold Berry was first to arrive on the scene. He cannot forget what he saw. I've never had nothing to hurt me that bad. Sherry Farmer and her husband, Bo, are grateful for everyone who has worked on this case and finally given them the truth. It does bring us peace, and it does bring us an, a better understanding. She says all of the families have grieved in their own ways, and despite many joyous moments through the years, one piece has always been missing from their lives. Sherry focused on victims' rights and never stopped searching for answers for all the families. Going through our grief, there was a focus. And the focus was there will be justice for Lori and Michelle and Denise. Jean Lori Hart died in prison a little more than two months after being acquitted of the murders in 1979. He was in prison for another crime. So, Reagan, a lot of people are going to wonder, does this finally mean this case is closed? No. So here's the agreement. Um, nothing will be closed. No agency will be allowed to close this case until the sheriff's office, the families especially, the district attorney's office, and OSBI agents all have a meeting and come to a 100% unified decision whether to close the case officially or leave it open. If you close it, you know, that there's a chance someone out there knows something. Um, but the sheriff wants to express everything's been tested They're by the best labs out there by OSBI labs there's no special DNA testing out there advanced testing that would give a different result so they're confident in their conclusions all right very good and we'll wait for that meeting and see what happens then and of course you'll be having more stories on this case yes. as well thank you Reagan